We'll jump right in with number one that starts on the front face of some duplex outlets. You'll see some duplex outlets actually have slopes cut all the way around the slots and that makes it easier to find the slot. So if you're slightly misaligned, it's gonna lead you to the slot. This is especially handy in low light and dark environments, but just know not all duplex outlets are created and some have a flat face, which looks a little more modern, but is gonna be a little harder to find those slots. Now, number two is that your slots are actually two different sizes. The smaller slot is gonna to correspond to your hot side and the larger slot is gonna to correspond to the neutral side. That doesn't always matter depending on the type of plug you have. This is a non-polarized plug, so the prongs are actually the same size and you could plug it in either way. But when it comes to polarized plugs where you see it does have a larger prong, that is gonna help you match things up and make sure that your appliance is plugged in correctly. Number three focuses on the slots still and how to quickly identify the difference between a 15 amp outlet like this one and a 20 amp outlet like this one. You'll see the neutral slot is different on the 20 amp and that would accommodate for a 20 amp plug which actually has a horizontal opposed to vertical neutral prong. So that's how you can quickly see if you have 20 amp outlets or 15 amp outlets. Number four deals with this little metal cradle which is called the yoke and the tabs that you'll always see on the end of each side. Those tabs are actually there to sit flush against the drywall. So when you fully install your outlet, everything's lined up. And when you put the face plate on, everything looks good and doesn't look sunken in like this example, which is definitely not desirable. Number five would be the same tabs, but you'll see that little cut line there. What that would be for is you take your, your pliers or your wire strippers and you bend those and break them off when you have an insulation where you have a metal electrical box. Like at this example where the duplex outlets are mounted to the metal face plate. And then on the back side, you can see the tabs are broken off so everything will have clearance and line up correctly to give you the fit and finish install you're looking for. Number six focuses on the color of the screw terminals, gold indicating hot, silver indicating neutral, and then green indicating your ground. Now number seven points out that although you see all of these gold examples here, every once in a while you will see an example where black is gonna be your hot side. Number eight is the tab feature here. This is connecting your top and bottom screw terminals. If you want to separate your top and bottom, so possibly you can connect one side to a switch on your wall, so it could control a lamp, you would break off this tab and then that would isolate the two sides. And you really only need to do that on the hot side for the vast majority of cases. Number nine calls out a common misconception and that is these screw terminals are actually not ideal for a Phillips head screwdriver. They're actually made to fit a number one Robertson, which is super common up in Canada, easy to keep on the screw and get the torque that you need, or my favorite using the ECX by Milwaukee. This is a number one, which has the Robertson and Flathead together which gives you the best of both worlds. It stays on the screw and gives you the surface area needed to torque everything down. Now, if you wanna see a list of all the recommended tools for DIYers, check in the description below the video. You'll see a link to our Amazon store where everything's separated out. Just like in our electrical, you'll see those ECX Milwaukee screwdrivers and our favorite Wago 221 lever nuts. Number 10 calls out these small little plastic channels these channels can actually be used to help bend a J-hook around your screw terminal. And if you go a little past center, that will help close that wire on the screw terminal. Then number 11 just calls out something we all should be doing, and that is going in the clockwise direction around the screw terminal. So when you tighten down the screw terminal, the wire will not have a tendency to pull out, but to actually pull into the center of that screw terminal resulting in a secure install. Number 12 calls out if you're using these holes in the back, commonly called speed wiring to wire your terminals. Here, they're calling it push wiring. Many people call it backstabbing. 
you can only use 14 gauge wire like this one. So it only will fit 14 gauge wire, although I do not recommend this type of wiring for DIYers. Number 13, even though there are these slots that will help you release the speed wires by inserting in a flathead screwdriver like this one, and you can release the wire, that feature is one and done and should not be reused. Number 14, speed wiring and the screw terminals are completely independent. So even though the screw terminal is all the way out, speed wiring, the wire is still secure. Number 15 is my preferred way of wiring an outlet. And that is when you step up to a commercial grade or spec grade outlet, most brands come with what is called back wiring. Back wiring utilizes a little internal plate you can see there. So all you have to do is make sure the plate is back pass the wire in, and now when you tighten down your screw terminal, that is actually pulling that plate on the backside against your wire, and that's what's making your secure install. It's just a clean fit and finish install, and that is why I prefer commercial grade outlets and using the back wire feature when wiring outlets. Number 16 focuses on the strip gauges. Now, whether it's a commercial grade like this top Eaton, or a residential grade, the strip gauges are actually just calling out the amount of copper you need for either speed wiring on this residential grade or back wiring on this commercial grade. If you're going to do side wiring, you will need a little bit more copper than what's called out on the strip gauge. Number 17, sometimes you'll find a little hole here on your ground terminal. What you can do is pass your wire just slightly into that hole and again use that hole to form your clockwise J-hook around your ground terminal. Number 18 is just a best practice. So if you only have one hot and one neutral coming in and you're not using your bottom screw terminals, it is always best practice to go ahead and just tighten up those screw terminals, especially on the hot side because then that's going to keep it flush with your housing. So with those tightened up, you can see your profile just a whole lot better without having those terminals sticking out past the plastic housing. Number 19, for your mounting screws, these are just 632 machine screws. There's a little advantage than standard machine screws because the start of it will help you align to the hole as it doesn't have threads. So you, if you need longer ones, you can actually pick up ones made by Eaton, or you can just get 632 machine screws that you can get at any of your home improvement stores. Number 20 is the self-grounding feature on most commercial grade outlets. This is an Eaton with that feature. This is a Leviton commercial grade or spec grade with that feature. And here's a used Legrand with that feature, and it actually has it on both the top and bottom. This will allow the yoke to bond to a metal electrical box. So if you have a ground to this yoke, that will also provide the ground to the metal electrical box. Number 21, we'll finish up on this commercial grade Eaton and show one feature that they have where they have built in wire strippers for both 14 gauge wire and 12 gauge wire. Now I would never say that these are the most efficient wire strippers, but just in case you're in a pinch, kind of a cool feature that Eaton integrates into the yoke. So how many of those 21 were new to you? I always appreciate getting you guys this feedback. It helps me tailor future videos so we can continue to grow together in our knowledge and take on more projects successfully around the house. Now, if you have an older home, you know there can be some more challenges, like when you wanna swap out a simple outlet and all of a sudden you find extremely short wires and don't know what to do. So check out this video right here and I'll walk you through the three different options you have to minimize the amount of pain it is to get that new outlet installed. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.